Come on, praise the Lord, people. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that you are born again? Aren't you glad that you are born again? I tell you, people, there's no wealth, there's no riches greater than the salvation that we freely received through Christ Jesus. You know, and all of you, this morning, all of us, we need to look on the inside of us. That's where your joy should come from. If you can stop looking around your surroundings, we live in a fallen world, but we have a savior that has overcome. And that's where your joy should be rooted. Amen, people. Amen. You need to start thinking that how many people in this nation, including professors, prominent people, many people in your family that are smarter than you, that do not have what you have, that you know Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know what the Bible says? Whoever has a son has life. And the Bible says, whom the son sets free is free indeed. I can, I can tell you, some of you come from neighborhoods and families that have more than you can ever dream. But they, don't, they can never possess the kind of joy that you have, the joy of the Lord. Amen. And that's why they keep asking you, how come you have less but you have more joy? It's because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, give the Lord a one more shout. Amen. Ready? Let's Let's follow the flow of the Spirit this morning. I'm going to share what I believe the Spirit of the Lord has put in my spirit for you. And I believe it's going to change your life and the way you look at yourself. And it's going to shape your future. It's going to help you understand who you are. And it's going to give you more confidence. It's going to give you an identity that you never look down again on yourself. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles before we sit down. Open your Bibles with me and we're going to read from 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. We are going to read these scriptures together. And everyone is standing. Open your Bible. I want you to read from your Bible. Get your pen and get your Bible. I give you permission to underline anything that stands out in those verses as we read. I give you permission to write in any revelation that the verse will bring to you. This is the living word of God. And I pray that these will not just be written scriptures. It will go from being a logos, a written ink, into a living rhema word for you that's going to change your life. Amen. So I'm going, to, I'm going to ask us to read together. If you, you can follow us. If you don't have a Bible, you can follow on the screen up here. Let's read 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. Let's read together. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of the stone body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all have been made to drink into one spirit. Verse 14, for in fact the body is one member but many. Verse 15, if the foot should say because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? 16, I don't hear you. Because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. Is therefore not of the body? Verse 17. Verse 
Verse 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. Verse 19. And if there were all one member, where would the body be? Praise the Lord, people. You may take your seat. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful class. I think you represent P4 or P3 very, very well. Praise the Lord, people. How many people have had a wonderful week? A one, I say a wonderful week. You know, let me t uh, describe to you what a wonderful week is. The first thing that you need to know about a wonderful week is that you end the week with professing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because I can tell you many people are backsliding away and many people are denying the Lord and many people are deceived and lost. But every morning you wake up and you soon know and you know that you know and you know that you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You are a champion. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how many debts you have. Every morning you wake up and your mouth can still say, Jesus is Lord. That makes you a winner before you step out of your house. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want you to understand that a good week is that week that God still speaks to you and leads you by his spirit. And so we end the year 2023 on a very good note. We are champions in Jesus' name. I'm already, I'm already excited for 2024 because that's a year that's going to be different for many of you. God is going to do amazing, amazing things. And I believe in the next seven, ten years to come, there are going to be transitions all over the world that are going to take place. And a few of them, a few of them that I believe, one of them, either the church, the Pentecostal movement, is going to start to take prominent prominence in every sphere of life in every nation. The Lord is starting to pull out the spirit of Daniel. Daniel, I think 11.32 says, but they that know the name of the Lord their God shall be strong. And these are the times I believe the Lord is going to raise the church in the places of prominence especially for those that fear his name. And I believe that there has been a, a, a period of time where the Lord has been fashioning, making, uh, shaping people that is going to live from nowhere, from obscurity to places of influence. And these people are going to carry the voice of the Lord. But they will, be, they will have so much authority in them that they will stand before leaders, world leaders, world governments, and they will say no or yes, and whatever their word will be, that will be law. That's what I believe, and I feel it in my spirit that we are, as Kawimpe Worship Center, for some reason the Lord has been preparing us, has been um, speaking to us, and we are starting to, to step out into territories that we have never even dreamt of stepping into. And so the next few years, the next several years, I believe a lot of changes, a lot of shifts, a lot of elevation, a lot of promotion are going to start happening to those that have been faithful. If you, need, if, if you believe, you can say a very strong amen. Yeah. You see, the, 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 one of the things that the church needs to understand that the word of the Lord comes and when it comes, you need to grab it and take it wholeheartedly. Because what God speaks, he will never change his mind. And so the church is rising. And the church is going to take prominence. There will be a lot of influence coming from the church in the next several years. And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me the other day, last Sunday we had uh, my pastor, our pastor, Pastor Gordon Banks. That man is a man of God. I've known Pastor Gordon for uh, over 10 years. And as, as I told you, he's become more than a friend, but a pastor to us, speaking to my wife, my life, uh, my children, in a, in, into our lives. You, every one of us needs someone that can speak hard truth. And Pastor Gordon is that man. He will look in your eyes and say, hey, 
after he visited here, we, we, had, a, we had a few meetings. And because this was his first time to come in Kawempe. I first met him before. We first met him in Masulita. But he's never been to, in Kawempe. So after he, lo- he took a tour, he preached here. So we have had a series of meetings with him asking what we call the hard questions. They had the questions, you know where they come from? They usually focus on your vision, your future, your strategy. What are you going to do with this? What is your plan for this? And you have to have answers. You know, let me tell you, people that are going to help you, they don't just, uh, what's could you be some loser? They don't just excite you talking about how, you, how, how good you are. You could be better. But you just need someone who doesn't fear you who, to, to speak into your life and say, you know what, you look good, but you could have been better if you did something different. And I'm not taking people who speak from the source of jealousy, people who don't love you. I'm talking to people to, about people who deeply care about you and love you and who not cover. Cover up for you just because they think you are going to be offended. And I want you quiet this morning like that because I want to speak into your spirit. Because I'm, I want to let you know that as Kawempe Worship Center, we are not just a usual, normal congregation that you find by the roadside trying to have a good time, fill their chairs, get an offering and feed and do whatever small thing churches do. We are the body of Christ. We are a dwelling place of the spirit of the Lord and each one of you is a person of influence. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care which, how many devils sit on your head. You are going to be free since you joined this church. You are going to be different. If you focus on what the Lord speaks to you from this pulpit, your life should become a champion's life. And so when, I, when, when we stand here as your pastors, we are not just talking to a group of believers that we want to go home and that we excite you so you can come back next Sunday. I don't care if you don't come back next Sunday. If you don't come back, then I know you don't belong here. My job is simple. I stand here to equip you for the work of ministry. And many of you are going to end up being leaders of influence and someday you will stand right where I stand and you will do, be doing exactly what I'm doing. And guess what will happen to you? Every seed you sow, your sowing will come back to you. Good measure, shaken down, running over. You'll be telling people, why are you coming late? Because it's a seed that you sowed. You'll be asking people, why don't you have a Bible? Because it's a seed. You'll be fighting with people. Why don't you raise your hands? It's because it's a seed. Woo-hoo-hoo. Preaching myself happy. You better be careful in this period because this is a period of sowing for your future. Make yourself understand that someday you'll be in a place of responsibility and no one will be supervising you No one will be motivating you. It will be you. It should come from you. And if you are going to be a leader, a person of influence, you start now, not tomorrow. You should have started yesterday. So I challenge each one of you. If if by mistake, you bypass all the other churches and you ended up here, and you feel it's still a mistake, you can leave. But if you know that the Lord spoke to you to join the Kawempe Worship Center, You know the Lord did not bring you to be a member. God brought you here to prepare you for a big assignment. Say to yourself, I have a big calling. I say, say to yourself, I don't hear you. I have a big calling. A great assignment. I am anointed to be a person of influence. And so the verses we read is what I, I read for you a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I'm going to go through the same thing that I told you that Sunday, that we are the body of Christ. 
the next level of our elevation and victory is going to come from us uniting as one. Each member must be attached to another member. There are victories that we have won as individually. You have declared you 40 days of fasting by yourself. You have done a lot of things by yourself. You've um, segmented ourselves in the families. Your family is doing this. Your family has this direction. But God's family is called the church and it's called the body of Christ. It's time for us to come together as one body. And once we do that, the victory that God is about to release over the church, you have never seen. But they will never come until we have the, every one of us has been formed into the body of Christ. And I want you to think deeper about that. Because God meant that creation works together in unity. What we call the ecosystem, the ecosystem is that everything depends on the other to live. But the enemy came to divide. And one of the tactics of the enemy is what I told you the Sunday that he's a divider. He will cause division even in yourself. But we are the body of Christ. And we are called. So the Bible says, we being one body, we being many, but are one. In verse 12, let's read those, go through those verses. For the body is one and has many members. But all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so is also Christ. And I want you to understand, Christ is not just the person that died on the cross. When you read other scriptures, like Colossians 3, Colossians 2, Ephesians 4, 2, you realize the greatness of Christ that is not just a one person, is God. And beyond himself, beyond what we know him as one of the Godhead, Christ is the breath of life even to his enemies. You know, we sing about these things that I've heard um, recently. I've heard things uh, like joy. Did you know that joy has a name? And the name is Jesus. Did you know that peace has a name? And the name of peace is Jesus. If you, if you read your Bible carefully, you understand that Christ is in every creature. That's what the Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, and have our being. Colossians 3 says, without him, there was nothing that was created. For all creation, creation was created by him, for him, and in him. And you need to understand that that's who Christ is. And so when the Bible says we being one, many members are one body in Christ, it means that there must be a place we come together to agree and say, I belong to you and you belong to me and we need to find a way that we can function together. Every one of us must bring their anointing, their gifting, their talent, their energy, and everything that you can do to add value to what God is doing. So being many members, we, are still, we should be one body. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, or, and all have been made to drink into one spirit. So when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are not baptized with the different spirit that I have. It's the same spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit that sits on you and sits in me. And this is how you understand we are brothers. The spirit in you gives a witness to the spirit in me because they are the same. We are one. No one has a greater measure of the spirit than the other. The only difference maybe we can have in the body of Christ is that we are called to be different parts. But it's the same spirit. Are you following me, people? Because some of you think 
that oh me I am more anointed than the other no it's not that the, the only difference we have is that we are many members but different bodies different parts but we are one one body are you following me people because we are not measured by the anointing or the ministries that we do every one of us is supported by the other. We could never call ourselves a ministry unless each one of you is doing their part. And the reason why we are overcoming is because there are many of you that have given your life to pray, to give, to, um, to fast, to be in fellowship, to love, to do a lot of things that we don't even mention here in this pulpit. There are many people that makes this church to be the body of Christ. Small things that we think, you think that are small, that are not counted or mentioned in the pulpit, but God uses them to keep us together as the church, as the body of Christ. But we have the same spirit. We are supposed to be baptized with the same spirit. It doesn't matter what tribe you are. The Bible says Greek or Jew or slave or free, in the body, there is no segments, segmentation on tribal basis. When we come to church, tribes cease. Cultural differences cease. And we adopt this kingdom culture in Christ. And there are for those of you that think you are from northern Uganda and some of you from western Uganda and you, you still want to do your own things. Christmas is coming and you are calling, you are going to invite your tribe people. All of you from Tolo, Tololo. You are going to, you have your smoker group, no Muganda allowed. You are born again, let me tell you something. You need to break that spirit in Jesus' name. All of, all of you from Mbalala, you are going to join your family. You, you've been calling us family, family for the last 11, 11 months. Now Christmas has come. You're about to jump in a car and go to Ntungiri, Lukungiri, Ntungamo, and take no Muganda. I challenge you in Jesus' name. All of you from Busoga, Christmas is here. Are you going to drive and take all the Busoga bar so you can speak the same language? You need to read this verse again. You need to read this verse again. I just saw said, uh, this American group. Let me tell you something. For me, I, I, I don't see color. I don't see color. I, I just feel bad that they don't speak Luganda. But I, they, some of them call them, oh, the whites have come. Me, I don't see color. But when you talk to people, let's, well, uh, let's welcome our, our white friends, our white visitors. They are not white. There is no black people in the church. Everyone is called the body of Christ. <laughs> and so those of you that still carry those backward, evil mindsets of tribal culture, all that... You are, you are in for shock because God is doing something new. And he's bringing different people from different backgrounds together to form a unity. Come see this, say. For some of you, you are this. You don't, it's going to be your family. You and your family, you are going to call your, your mother. They are going to come from the village for Christmas. You call your brothers and sisters, and you've already told everyone, it's family stuff, family affair, no outsider around. I challenge you. Read the scripture again. For by one spirit, with a capital S, we are all baptized into what? Into what? Look at your Bible, verse 13. For by one spirit, mm-hmm, into what? Whether what? Whether Mululu, whether Choli, Langi, Soga, Ganda, Nkole, Rwanda. I don't care. If you are part of the body of Christ, if you are called born again, 
you are part of me and I'm part of you. I should be closer than your biological family who are not born again. What brings us together? The spirit of God. We have the same fear of the Lord. For verse 14 says, for in fact the body is not one member but, one, but many. And that's where we need to remember that as we function and do different ministries, you don't look down on yourself and say, I am less important than the pastor. I am less important than the intercessor. The pastors are more important. Or the choir is more important. No. We are one body, but different members. Are you following me, people? So, let me find my notes. So, God made the church to function as a body. And I told you last Sunday that the reason why the church, that Sunday, the reason why the church has lost ground is because we have segmented and dissected the body and every part is operating independently from the other. We don't, because there is so much pride, every part is fighting for prominence, fighting to make a name. Every one of us is fighting to build their own ministry. Every one of us is fighting to make a name. But you need to understand, we are all called to promote one name and to build one kingdom. Let me see this say. <laughs> Each part cannot function separately. Every part needs to be together. Each one of us needs to find a way to join a group of believers. Do we, as you join with one another, do I say that we are perfect? No. But that's one of the reasons why we come together because we come to learn from each other. We are a family. We are the body. Some parts are still weak, so we depend on the stronger parts to sustain us. And so the weak, the stronger should never deny the weaker ones. But the weaker ones should not intend to remain weaker. They should also thrive to become stronger. That's how the body should be, should function. So the enemy has taken advantage of our division, of our separation. We don't, we don't come together. We are divided on tribal lines. We are divided on, on our economic lines. These are rich. These are poor. That's one of the things that I first met here. I've never had it anywhere until I came, I came to Kawempe. And I heard people say, those are the rich. They have cars. But the Bible says Christ became poor so you, become, you can become rich. Just because someone has a car doesn't make them richer than you. you are, we are all richer in Christ. I refuse to let anyone look on, down on me just because they have more expensive cars than mine. I refuse to let anyone look down and put me down just because they dress better than I am. That's on the outside. But the richness of our souls come from having Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then above all, you've been baptized by the Spirit of God. Not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of the living God. In other words, God had deposited a part of himself in you. That permanently resides in you. And you, know, you need to know that when God, wherever God is, there is dominion, there is power, there is victory. He cannot be defeated. If God came and built a house, built a house in the neighborhood, everyone will know that God lives in the neighborhood. But the same God lives on the inside of you. The day you wake up and know that Christ in you is greater than everything outside of you, you will become victorious. So the enemy has taken advantage of our disorganization and made us weak by dividing us, divide and rule. We don't agree with one another. We don't fellowship with one another. Everyone does their own thing. 
We are trying to build a church, but within the church, everyone is trying to build their own small kingdom. And the enemy, you need to understand something about the demonic powers, the dark powers of darkness. They operate in groups. The devil is the most organized thing. You need to understand that before he was the devil, he was the arch, one of the archangels in heaven. He saw how organized heaven was. And he took the same person copy. Heaven is so organized in ranks. Heaven is orderly. So orderly that when, when you speak to angels, they understand what they call authority. Demons understand authority more than the church does. The church does not understand authority. Why? Because we think because we drank from the same spirit, baptized in the same water, read the same Bible, that we are all equal. We are not equal. We are many members, but God has appointed first apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists in the church. And then he has given different levels of, of responsibility. To people in the church, they are those that God has called to lead at a higher level. And he's given them more authority. And those under them should understand that there is a leader among you. And then the leaders above, uh, below, they should respond to the leaders above. And the leaders, there is a, rank, a, line, a, a ranking system in heaven. And demons, that's how they operate. I can tell you. Uh, demons understand if you come into their territory they will know if you are called with authority over them that's why you read in the book of I think Acts 17 the sons of Sceva they saw Paul Paul was an apostle and the Bible clearly says Paul the apostle appointed an apostle to the Gentiles. That was his assignment. And his authority was in those areas. Corinth, Ephesus, those cities where he went, the demons knew that he was a saint one. Heaven authorized him to operate. And so when he stepped in those areas, the demons knew who he was. Why? Because they understand authority. And when he commanded them, in the name of Jesus, leave, they knew that his authority is above there, so they left. And then the sons of Sceva came and said, eh, in the name of, of Jesus, the pop preachers leave. And the Bible says they went away naked because demons stood up and said, Paul, we know. Christ, we know. But who are you? In other words, where is your authority? So, if we, we all have spiritual authority of some form, if we bring that authority in order to operate as a body in a systematic way, we will be so powerful that it will take us a few months to overrun the demonic around us. But the church has one of the biggest problems. It's called division. So, here in Kawempe, Everyone responds to the senior pastor. When the senior pastor leaves, people will come back when he's back. Well, my is stepping on someone's toes. Let me tell you something. We have so many, many pastors in this place. And don't you ever think that these pastors, just because you are more educated than, that, than them, if, because you have more money than them, that you, you, you can look down on them. Heaven doesn't. Heaven doesn't look on, down on these appointed servants of God. You should have the same respect for the senior leaders, for even other pastors. When we get to that level as a church, we we'll overcome. You should have the same respect for your departmental leader that you have for the senior pastors. Do you know how obedience is counted in heaven? 
When we stand here and say we are going to do this 2024, and you respond without questioning, because Christ uses the head, uses the structure he put in place as a body to operate his church. And for many of you, 31st, we have already told you we are going to be here. But you know how division is, is coming about? 31st, you already have your plans. You haven't had our announcements. On 31st, when do we start? You don't know because you are planning not to be here. You, are, you, you have your own thing. And no one has assigned to you. Until you learn to be under authority, you never understand what it means to operate as a body. And many of you, just because you grew up in broken homes, many of you, especially in Kawempe areas, you don't know where, what it means to have a father in the house. Many of you grew up with single mothers. You have no male, or male voice in your head. So for us as pastors to stand here and tell you something, that you will, this is what we are going to do. You have no clue what is happening in your world. But let me tell you something. I don't care. If you didn't, you are an orphan, your father died before you were born, and your mother got this other stepfather that mistreated you, you are now in the church of the living God, and God should be your father. And you should never be looking at your earthly father as your example. You should be measuring yourself against the standards of your heavenly father. That's your father. But many of you, there are so many dysfunctions around authority. You don't obey anyone. You don't respond to anyone. You will do what you want. Why? Because you come from a broken family. So that dysfunction of disobedience, stubbornness, not listening to directives has come into your salvation and now it is stagnating you. It's not allowing you to grow further. Why? Because it's, it's a dysfunction. And that's something I want to break over each one of you in Jesus' name. You need to understand what it means to be under authority. All of you women, you need to understand what it means, it means to have a husband in the house and him being the head of the house. All of you children, you need to understand that even though your earthly father died or rejected or abandoned you, you are now in the church, the family of God. And Jesus is the head of that church. And he has appointed the first apostles, prophets, to speak in his place. So when we stand here and say something, we represent not ourselves, we represent him. So you should not look at my structure. You should be hearing the voice of him speaking through me. So that's one of the biggest reasons why division has come. It's just because people don't understand the structure of authority. <laughs> so, Jesus is the head. Just like your biological body is made up, the head sends out information to the rest of the body. The central nervous system is sitting up in your head. It's where communication happens. But many of you we are going to, bring, to break this orphanage thing off your life. Because if you, if, you if you grew up with no father, let me tell you one dysfunction you still carry. Disobedience. You don't know how to respond to the electives. If you grew up with an abusive father who never spoke to you, who beat you up, who abused you verbally, who did those things that they did to you, you need to understand. You still carry a, a, a dysfunction that will never allow you grow into the fullness of your potential in Christ until you learn how to deal with it and break it off your life. 
That's one of the reasons why people, why churches don't function as a unit. Because the moment people start coming together, and then this one, these few people will stand up and say, okay, raise up your hand. You don't even hear them because it's not in you. No, no one told you. The only thing that your mother, your single mother told you was your father left me with you. You were burdened. That's all you know. You were burdened. If your father was here, I would, I would not be suffering. I would not be carrying these boxes of tomatoes going to the... This, you, and even you single mothers, stop treating your children as if they are a burden to you. Speak life into your children. Get them to a place where they can hear a male voice. Bring them to the pastors. Bring them to a place where they can hear a voice of a man and place them under authority and say, I want you, pastor, to act as a father over my daughter. We can do that. The problem is that I have so many people who come here and say, pastor, I want you to father me. And I say yes, and then I tell them, I tell them go and talk to mama, and they never go to talk to their mother. I cannot be your father if your, my wife is not your mother. Full stop. Mutegede. For some of you have come to me, and you, two years ago, you told me to be your father. And you're still making the trip between me and my wife. I told you, you go talk to my wife and you're still waiting. Why? Because you think, just because your mother at home has called you names, even this one is going to call you names. This is the church. This is not your family where you come from. This is the church. You are loved. God has loved you and knows you by name. And you are under a church with pastors filled with the Spirit of God. We know who he is. We have tested the love of God. We can never call you name that your family called you. We can never call you small leg though. We can never call you those things. You are a daughter of God. You are a treasure of heaven. You are beautiful. All of you ladies, stand up. I am saying it from the pulpit. And if I meet you on the way in the corner and tell you you are beautiful, it is heavenly, it is divine, and nothing beyond. I am saying it from the pulpit. You are beautiful. I don't care what boys called you in your class, P4, P3. You are beautiful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not short. You are not ugly. You are beautiful in the eyes of your father. And some of you are hearing this for the first time and maybe for the last, but I will keep telling it to you whenever I meet you. You are beautiful. I said you are beautiful. And you better believe it. And tell yourself I am beautiful. I am beautiful, fearful, and wonderfully made. Tell yourself, I am one fearfully and wonderfully made. God had your design before he gave you that nose, before he gave you that shape of the body. That's God's choice for who you are. You may look like your mother, but God has the final design. You are a masterpiece of his creation. And some of you say it as if you are, you, you are sick. You may take your seat. I'm telling you people, in this church you grow. In this church you grow. We cannot function as many parts as one. Unless each part is health, has life and life in fullness. But many of you are full of dysfunctions. And so anytime we try to work with you, there is this fear of men. 
There's a fear of authority. I have seen women older than me running away from me on this campus. Why? Because I represent authority to them and I look like their father. That's a dysfunction you need to break off your life. It's a devil lying to you. You need to change your mind. You need to renew your mind and know that God loves you and believe it. Let me tell you something. We may look tough, but we can never beat you. There's nothing. I, what can I do? What's the worst that I can do to you? You think about it. I mean, you came, I told you to do something as a person, you refused. Am I going to eat you? I don't have that, that authority. I can, if, if I give you a directive to do something and you refuse, there is nothing more I can do. But fear hidden in you. Think that I'm going to say something, I'm going to do something. You're always walking up to us with a closed door, a wall up in your face. You are talking to us, but you are inside the wall, fenced with iron bars. You are inside. You are looking like a pastor. Praise the Lord, but you are about to run away. Why? You are so scared. You need to get rid of that fear. You need to sing those songs and mean them. I am no longer a slave to fear. The fear of men is a snare. It's a net for hunters. It traps you. It can never let you speak your mind. It can ne you can never have self-expression. You can never say your mind. Why? Every time you want to speak up, you're so scared of rejection. And that's why we can never help you because every time you come before us, you are presenting yourself as this perfect creature. But inside, we know you are not. And sometimes I don't want to tell you that there is something wrong with you because your maturity is too low. If I tell you that you, something is wrong with you, it's going to break you. You are going to leave church, leave salvation, and forget the Lord. You need to grow up. Every part should be health, should be stronger. For the body to function. But some of you are still bleeding from the wounds of your past. And very slowly we are telling, Banangi, we have this party. Banangi, we have this thing that's going on. Banangi, yesterday we had, uh, Friday and Saturday we had the marriage retreat. And we announced for six months for you to come. But many of you did not even think about coming. Why? Because you fear a setting of accountability. Because the last time you did sit in a circle, they were pointing fingers at you and calling you. That's why your head is straight like that. It's because you have no wisdom. You have no understanding. You have no crew. And they called you names. And every time they say about something structured, oh, come together. Let's meet together. You are scared of anything. And so we come to church and we love the brethren but we still want to be apart. We've been hurt by our past. We've been wounded by our people. The one that should have loved us, have wounded us, and we have decided in the inner parts of our being that I will never, I will never fully connect to another human being. You are married, but you are so lonely. You are in a family, but you are so lost. They love you, but you don't even feel the love. Yesterday I was talking to one of my friends. Been married for over 30 years and he told me last week I had a talk with my wife and he said, I told her I loved you, I love you. And she's cried. I said, you don't. I don't feel like I'm loved. Thirty years of a marriage but still in the house. She doesn't feel like she has ownership. She doesn't feel like she has anything, any, anything to contribute. Why? It goes back. Her father abandoned her. And that thing has followed her up to now. And now she's in a man's house for 30 years. But she's on a set, a set, a set get tension. You are on tension that this man is going to hurt me like my father. And let me tell you something. 
And it will happen. It will happen because we live in a fallen world. The enemy is so deceiving. Sometimes I will, I will come to you because I don't know who you are. I don't know where you come from. And I will say something that your father used to say to you. And I'll break your heart. And I'll walk away not knowing what I've done to you. And I hope I've, I haven't done anything to you like that in my, since you've been here. But just because you are human, the enemy targets the same bleeding areas to make the body stay divided. So we come together as many members, but one body, but there are wounds on our legs. There are pain on our hands. There are wounds on our heads. We are bleeding in the back. Every part of us still dysfunction. Our hands are shaking. They call you to a meeting. You come thinking that they are going to question me and put me in a kagulichi. What's the kagulimu luzung? And question me. But let me tell you something. Should we stop? Or should we build the church? So that's the dilemma we have as pastors. We want you to be the body of Christ. That's what I'm saying. And so there is a responsibility demanded on us by the Lord to make you, to help you become the body of Christ. But yet, there are wounds in you that are still bleeding that makes you skeptical of everything we do and say. Because we know, all of you that are married, that is skip, skip, skipping these meetings, marriage meetings, is because you are bleeding. You don't want to be exposed because in your past, exposure was devastating. They called you names. They cast you. So now, you are a new family. It's called a church. The pastor say, you are beautiful. You said it, it gone from your mouth, your ear is already out. You will never remember it. Why? Because when you were young, they called you a, nick, a nickname in that house. And, when, and they called the same in school. And now you are 30 and over 30 some years later. And you are trying to convince you that you are beautiful. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to about stuff that I've gone, I've walked through myself. Over the years, I have had to deal with stuff. I've prayed, I've fasted, I have had to deal with dysfunctions so I can keep my wife. I have had to deal with dysfunctions so I can raise my children. I had to deal with dysfunctions. So I can sit in the sack of men and have a voice of importance. I, they used to appoint me to sit on, on committees and I would disqualify myself and say I can't. Why? Because my background does not give me the value to sit on any committee. Because I was told I was supposed to be a loser and a failure. And so for me to sit in the circle of important, uh, important men, the devil will always whisper in my ears, do you know you are the only poor person in this circle? Look at your friend. And I will look at myself and know, you know, I am not the, I'm the only one who is still renting. I am the only one who is king and using a border border. I am the only one who can't afford it to pay for my, school, my children's school fees. And I used to measure myself like that because that's how I was brought up. I was told we are poor. It stuck in my mind. It bothered me for years. I thank God for the word of God. I have had to read my Bible on a very, on a, every day in the morning and convince myself with scriptures. I am a son of a God. I'm a son of God. I am a winner. I'm a champion. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm the head, not the tail. I am the top, not the bottom. I am more than a conqueror. I say those words, not that I'm saying them to anyone, but I'm convincing myself because my dysfunctions 
In my past, do not say that I'm more than a conqueror. I have lost. I've been a loser for too long. And it was simple for me to sit back and keep my losing position. But thank God for, for Christ and the redeeming power of the cross. I've been born again. So when we sing and raise our hands, we're not just singing for you to see or raising our hands. We've been through stuff. And now we have come to a place of victory. I am convinced I'm valuable. I can help others because I've been helped. And I won't talk about my family. I won't talk about my father or my mother or what my family did to me in the past. It's all in the past. I will say like Paul says in Philippians 3, behold, the past is gone. And the new has come. Paul said, in my past, I am a Jew, a Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised on the eighth day, a persecute of the church. But yet, I count all things as rubbish so I can gain a crust. And he says, what I do, I forget what is behind me and press on what's ahead of me. That's your determination. If you're going, we, if you're going to be the church, 2024, we need each one of you to stop and look at yourself in the mirror and know and spell out those dysfunctions until you admit that you have a problem and we can help you. You can always hide. I have had people come to my office and I tell them, I had you do this and this. And they think I am over Kaihula, over the OC. I don't know, be a Saija, the prison warder. I am not. I am just a person representing the grace of God. If you say I have been sleeping around with men or sleeping around with girls, there is nothing I can do. I can't put you to prison. I can't kill you. I can't. The only thing that I can do in my power is what Christ gave me. It's to bring you to a place of mercy. Grace so you can overcome like I did. But for you to come and try to be part of this church and pretend you are perfect, it makes it impossible for us to function as the body of Christ. Is that too much truth for you? So we must stop. 2024, let's all of us stop and say, do you have father issues? Do you have mother issues? Do you have authority issues? You need to spell them out because some of you, until you overcome those areas, even that marriage, you may lose it because some men are not that patient like they are going to withstand that abusive language because you've been abused every time you, 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 they, they, they do something. You go into a mode of anger and you say things that you don't even remember. And then you come back and say, I am so sorry. I don't, want, I don't know what came on me. It didn't, it didn't come on you. It came from you. That's what, that's, that's what these functions do. You, you, you say, I don't know what came on me. No. Rage, anger is already stored up here. Until we all stop those, those funny, funny habits that we, we all have. You come in a place and they try to collect you. But this is the way we do things. And then you get annoyed and you disappear for three weeks. And then when you're, where is our hand? Where is the ear? The ear got annoyed and walked away. <laughs> How can we hear? We have to wait until the ear is back. That's what the scriptures mean. So we are trying to tell you, brother, you have a calling of, uh, of the hand. You are the hand of Kawempe Worship Center. But every time... We tell you, please do this. You get offended and you disappear. So we try to function without you. We function with one hand until you think about it and say, I think now they are forgotten. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We need to walk through a process of healing, all of us, including myself. Including myself. I am so thankful for my wife, because she has, she's been patient. 
with so many areas of my dysfunctions. I'm speaking as a man, a human. I've had so much fear in me. I never, I will never, never dream of standing before more than one person in my life and say anything. I was a bank bencher, not because I didn't have wisdom or I wasn't smart enough, but the world told me that's where I belong. I was so scared of people. Leadership was not my thing. The enemy took garbage, rubbish, trash, and put it on me to bury the, function, the, the, the calling and the assignment heaven had on me. Before I was formed in my mother's womb, God knew exactly who I was. And so when I was born, the enemy targeted me not to become anything that God wanted me to become. So he put me through a series of damages that would take me years to try to walk back into the image of God, into the man I was meant to be from time, from before time began. And that began with my salvation. I got born again, but I still stood back in the choir. I tried, I can't sing bass. By then, in the choir, I couldn't sing bass, but I pretended like I sing bass. Why? I wanted to be in the back. I knew I had a calling. And all I, I, I wanted to do was to do it in a group setting so no one recognizes me. I wanted to be in a group. I wanted to minister in teams. Why? Because in teams, you can hide yourself. You can hide your weakness. You can hide your dysfunction. But the Lord bringing me to the front. I will never forget one time we are in a service and uh, Pastor Kaiser is praying for people and he says, Kasozi, come here. Pray for this one. I've never done it myself. The, I started shaking. Every part of me started shaking. I was so scared. But somehow Pastor Kaiser knew that there is a call on my life and I stepped out and that Often his spirit took me over. You can't do it. I had like a thousand demons whispering in my ears. You are a failure. You can't pray for anyone. You can put your dirty finger on anyone. Go back to the back. Step back. Run. And that's what most people do. Run. They run. Some of you are here because you are in the run. You are sitting here, but you are, not, you are not safe in that chair. You are seated the way you are sitting because you are running. You ran from somewhere. You are here still running. No one knows you. We know a little bit about you. But the moment we try to get so close, you run. Because that's your life. You've been running. You run from primary. You run P7. You run in senior three. You've been running from school to school. You are sitting in that marriage. You are running every time you tell that man, me, I'm going back. I'll find a small room. I'll be my, my, myself. I break that spirit over your life in Jesus' name. So today, I want to stop here, but I don't want to do things half-heartedly. Like, I'm going to pray for you so you can be healed of your dysfunctions. Today, let's just identify dysfunctions. Get your pen and start writing things down. Where you brought up in a single, uh, by a single parent, you have dysfunctions. And more probably, you have authority issues. If you were brought up by a single mother, you have anger issues. Rejection is part of your dysfunction. If you grew up, in a poor environment, very poor. You couldn't, no one paid your school fees. You have a poverty mindset. And I can tell it to you that right now you're looking for people to host you for Christmas and you're not looking to host anyone. Why don't you get there in church? Sorry. Because you are not, you are not used to give. 
you have some of you have money issues. Why? Because you grew up in a poor environment. A tithe is something you have to debate a, a thousand times. Some of you men, you sit here and it's your wife who forces you to tithe. Your wife. I said it, your wife. It's usually, if a man is poor in his mind, he will not, he will not, he will not tithe. And that's how you, you, you lose everything you own as a family. Come and see this. If you are abused verbally, physically, sexually, I've gone through these things as in, in, in my teaching as a wounded, a wounded display. You have rejection issues. And that is a compound of many other issues. If you grew up huh, and you don't know who your father, your parents are, you have an orphanage spirit. I don't care how anointed you are. You have an orphanage spirit. And 2024, we are going to deal with these things. We are going to deal with the devil and his cousins. Stand on your feet. And I want you to go back and listen to that teaching that we did on spiritual wounds. And I want you to start identifying areas that we are going to be, you are going to focus on praying for. And I want you to look at me, people. I want you to be honest with yourself. Do you see me? Are you hearing me? Do you hear me, people? I want you to be honest. This function, you can never deal with them alone. You are going to need help. And I want you to give us permission to come into your life. Because I see many of you, there is so much potential, so much ability. But the enemy keeps dragging you backward. You are, you, are, you are fearful. You fear people. You fear authority. Anything that smells like authority. <laughs> you rather do your own thing. You rather be independent. You rather go and spend your own money. Some of you that have very little money, you buy people, you buy for everything. You use money to get your way out of every everything, but let me tell you something. You need to stop and look in the mirror and say, I need help. I've had to stop. I thank God for Pastor Godwin Banks and the team that was here. Two years ago, I went through a, 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 a men's literature that we just did for the men here and we are going to do it for every man in this church. I sat in the sack of men and for three days, I focusing on me. I looked at the inside of me and I saw things. That I kept, when I came home, you can ask my wife. I had to apologize and say, forgive me, woman. Because I never thought I was hurting anyone. I thought, that's my personality. That's who I am. That's how God made me. I was proud of my dysfunctions. Until Pastor Gordon and the team sat me down and started dispelling the dysfunctions of my life as a man, as a leader. And I told myself, how come I've been able to, to live this long with this, all these unhealth issues in my life? And from that moment, I can tell you, I started dealing with my fears. And one by one, I'm gaining victory. I'm gaining victory. I'm gaining victory. I'm not an orphan. My orphan spirit is gone. I, you know, there is, I wish you can see on the inside of me, there is so much confidence that I never used to have three years ago. I was so scared. 
shame was part of me. I walked around with shame, but no one knew. But thank God for the liberty of Christ. So, have you written your list? I want you to go back on your Kawempe Worship Center, Kawempe Worship Center page, YouTube page, and look for that sermon that titled Spiritual Wounds. And I want you to listen to that sermon again and identify more areas that you need to deal with. And I want you to write those things down. And purpose in 2024, by the end of 2024, we are going to bring some giants down in the name of Jesus. Shame, fear, rejection, all those demons and their cousins will not be part of you. You are going to get back your identity. You are going to gain back your confidence in the Lord. You are going to be a woman God meant you to be with confidence, self-esteem, self-expression. You know fear no man. I'm not talking about you standing up to men and stand on the tables. I'm talking about the confidence that we get in the word of God to believe that we can do the things heaven says we can do. You are going to be the best husband. You are going to be the best father. Yeah. You are going to be the best mother. And as you go through these, these functions, you need to face them and go back to your family and tell. I was, I hope you people in London, you are not watching this. Because I was in London and we started dealing with stuff with this, but I can tell you, I mean, because I, I want to mention names here, but I, 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 I was praying for someone in London. And this is what they told me. I am so broken and dysfunction that I've ran my family apart. My children no longer talk to me and grandchildren never come to see me and it's through my mouth. This one, this one person told me and I want you to pray for me that God may heal me my bitterness, my anger. He said, where does it come from? It goes back to age seven as a, as a girl standing before people that are, should have protected should have loved, should have cared deeper. But they called her names as a little girl. And she lost her self-esteem. And she started walking through rejection, fears. And she eventually ended up with a family that with her own mouth, she has torn apart until that day. I told her, your healing is going to bring back your family. But you need to give them a phone call and apologize to your children, to your in-laws, to your grandchildren, and make this become healthy. And I'm telling you, the moment God heals you, pain goes away. Shame goes away. I stand here, I have no pain from the thing that I suffered. I look at people who abused me as a kid, who did stuff to me, I have so much grace and so much mercy for those people. I look at them as Christ did and I look at them and say, they didn't know what they are doing. And that's what exactly Joseph told his brothers. They said, oh, we are sorry, we sold you. We are so sorry, please don't kill us. And Joseph said, no, 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 no. Please don't fear. What you meant for evil, God turn it around. For my good. Those dysfunctions, the areas of your pain, are going to be the very areas that God is going to use you to bring healing to others. 2024, we will be the body of Christ. Raise your hands, close your eyes, and say, I'm going to be a healthy part of the body of Christ. I'm going to be a healthy part of the body of Christ. Holy Spirit, show me those areas that have brought dysfunctions to my life and to the body of Christ. 
I want to be part of your church. A united part of the body of Christ. I pray for you, my brother. I pray for you, my sister. May the Lord help you. May the Lord break every pride, every, every hypocrisy that comes from hiding your sin, hiding your weakness, thinking that you're making people think that you are perfect. May the law help you. May the grace of God help you. Take a moment and surrender those things to the Lord. Tell, the, tell yourself, tell the Lord, I surrender everything. The orphan spirit, the rejection, fear, disobedience, fear of authority. Surrender at this moment. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, I don't hear you people. Come on, come on, people. Hallelujah. One more time, lift your hands. Just surrender to the Lord. Surrender to Him. That's the reason why Jesus came. By His stripes we were healed of every emotional wounds, all kinds of wounds. And now we can surrender at the foot of the cross. Just lay everything before Him. Lay everything before him. He says, take my yoke for it is easy to carry. The Lord is asking you to exchange your burden for his. Every heart, every ache. Somebody just break before the Lord. Surrender before him. He is your savior. He is the lover of your soul. He is the palm of Gilead. This morning, he is the palm of Gilead. He is coming with the healing. He wants to heal your heart this morning. Come on, somebody pray. Just surrender to the Lord. Every kind of bitterness, every kind of heart, what you have gone through, molestation, abuse, surrender before the Lord. He's the balm of Gilead this morning. The presence of God is in this place. Come on, church. Let's just surrender to him. Lift your hands. Surrender to him. Surrender your heart. Tell him, Lord, I need healing. I need you to touch my heart. I need you to heal me today. In the name of Jesus, Father, we surrender to you. We surrender to you, O God. You are the palm of Gilead. By your stripes, we were healed. Father, we surrender every heartache. We surrender everything we have gone through, every bitterness. We surrender to you. Some of you need to forgive right now. You need to mention that person who hurt you. You need to forgive. You need to tell the Lord, I choose to forgive this morning. I choose to forgive this morning in response to your word. Come on, somebody, surrender yourself. Surrender yourself. Everybody you have held in your heart. This is the time to forgive. This is the moment where the palm of Gilead is ready to heal your heart. The Lord's presence is here here today. The Bible says he sent his word to heal our disease and to deliver us from every kind of destruction. Right now the Lord has sent his word. His word is healing your heart. He's healing your heart. But you need to surrender to him. You need to surrender to him this morning. Come on somebody. Just give it up to God. Lay yourself before him. Tell him Lord I need healing. I am hurting at this place. I am hurting at this 
place. I have carried unforgiveness. I'm so bitter. I've been poisoned with bitterness. But I thank you for your word. Your word has a healing power. I ask you to heal my disease. Heal me emotionally. Heal me physically. Heal me, oh God. Heal me, oh God. And I will be healed. Thank you for sending your word this morning. Lord, I pray, heal me. Heal the deepest part of my heart, oh God. I surrender at the foot of the cross. Somebody pray, pray, tell him. Open your heart to the Lord. I surrender at the foot of the cross. For this reason did the Son of Man came, that we may be saved. And the Lord is here and he's saying, I do not condemn you this morning. The Lord is saying, I do not condemn you. He's saying, I receive you. I receive you. God is receiving you. He's receiving you. He's receiving you. In his embrace, he's receiving you. He's receiving you. He did not come to condemn, but that the world may be saved. The Lord wants to save you from that situation. He wants to save you from what you went through. The Lord wants to heal your heart this morning. Come on, somebody surrender to him. Surrender to him. Surrender to him. Accept his love this morning. He has loved us with an everlasting love. He has loved us with an everlasting love. For this reason did he come because he loved us. For God so loved you and me that we may that he sent his only son that we may believe in him and we may be saved. Come on somebody just tell him thank you for your love. Somebody receive the love of God this morning. His love is healing to our hearts. His love is healing to our hearts. Father we receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your unconditional love. We receive your unconditional love. Somebody, the Lord is saying, I am the father to the fatherless. I am the father to the fatherless. I have loved you with an everlasting love. For a long time you have run away before God. You have run away from his presence. But the Lord is waiting for you with his arms open wide. Like the prodigal son, the father waited for him. The Lord is waiting for him. You are not rejected. The Bible says we are accepted in the beloved. The Lord is saying this morning that you are accepted. I have accepted you. I have chosen you. You are my special creation. You are a royal priesthood. I love you with an everlasting love. Before you are in your mother's womb, I knew you. I have good plans for you. Plans for good and not for evil. All things are working together for your good. He's saying, I'm making all things beautiful in my own time. I am doing something new in your life. If you only surrender this morning, if you only surrender to him, Father, we give you the praise. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Thank you for your love, O oh God. You are the balm of Gilead. You are the balm of Gilead. You are the balm of Gilead. We thank you because you're healing us today. Thank you for your word, O oh God. You sent your word and you healed our disease. Thank you for sending your word this morning. Thank you for healing our hearts, O oh God. Thank you for the work you have started this morning. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Now come on somebody, just clap your hands to the Lord. Thank Him. Thank Him for His word. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says He sent His word and He healed our disease and delivered us from all destruction. Amen. The word of God has healing power. He's the palm of Gilead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was also abused by my uncle, beaten seriously when I was growing up and he told me you'll never amount to anything. Praise the Lord. It took me a long time and I'm still dealing with it. But the Lord has healed me. I can testify. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what? Every Wednesday, I've never said it here, but every Wednesday, we meet with a group of young men, probably 15. Praise the Lord. And we've been dealing with these weaknesses. And 
they can testify the Lord has healed them and is still healing us. Praise the Lord. And today I want to welcome every young man. If you're here every Wednesday from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., we are here praying, laying every wound that we have and the Lord is healing us. And it's from Papa's teachings on woundedness that that's the same we are following. And guess what? Now they are also healing others. On Thursday, we opened another group which has now five men and uh, Mirembe is the one leading it because he was also healed. He's doing the same. Praise the Lord. So every young man, kindly, we open it up for you. We, ne we never wanted to, to put it uh, public. We were going one by one and fetching you out. But we are calling you, please come on Wednesday from 10 p.m. to 1 p.m. We, we, we deal with these things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, once again, clap to the Lord for his word. Amen. Why don't we thank God today with our offerings for his word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Package a good offering unto the Lord. He has been gracious. He has been kind to speak his word expressly to our hearts. Kindly package your offering before him. Amen. Your tithe. In case you're tithing, the ushers are going to give you an envelope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to give you the praise. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, O oh God. Since January, you have been faithful. Countless times you have spoken to us expressly from this pulpit your word. And your word is living. And you said you don't send your word and it returns to you void until it accomplishes the word to which you sent it for. And we thank you because today your word has come expressly and it has pierced our hearts and it is bringing healing to each and every soul. Today we want to thank you for your presence amongst us. We want to thank you for your word, O oh God. Your word is living. The words you speak to us are spirit and life. We can never buy your word. We can never repay you enough. But we pray that you take and appreciate this small token we have. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We'll walk to the front cheerfully. Come and give your offerings to the Lord. Amen. In case you're giving online, watching us online and you like to give online, I believe the media team has cast our numbers. Praise the Lord. In case you're here, also you're giving through mobile money. We have our mobile money lines. Praise the Lord. Just follow the instructions and the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. Can we see first time visitors in case you are visiting with us for the very first time? Praise the Lord. Wow. Clap for that brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there any other one? You're visiting for the very first time. Praise the Lord. Well, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. This is Kawempe Worship Center. Kindly wave your hand. Mamana Longotaka. Amen. Immediately after the service, kindly follow her. And she's going to wait on you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Kindly take your seat for one minute as we listen to the announcements which are going to be played by the media team. Media team, please play our announcements. Praise the Lord, church. A very good morning to you all. My name is Lydia Chokunda and I bring to you... Praise the Lord, church. A very good morning to you all. My name is Lydia Chokunda, and I bring to you the announcements of December. A 
Merry Christmas to you all, church. Feel free to tell your neighbor, Merry Christmas. Yeah, the Lord has brought us far, Ebenezer. For my very first announcement, 16th of December, 2023, we shall have the ministers and leaders Christmas party. Everyone say Christmas party. Yes, at only 25,000 Ugandan shillings, just 25K. And you can be part of this great celebration. Do not miss out. Tell your neighbor not to miss out. Every leader and minister in this church, you are open to pay. And we will go have a weekend. Amazing. And on the 17th of December, 2023, we shall have the Leadership Insights class graduation. So for everyone who has been part of this class, our graduation is on the 17th. Please prepare and be around for that service so that you can be part of the ceremony. And then the 20th to the 24th of December, we shall crown off the revival week of this year, 2023. Everyone say revival week. The last one of its kind, the last one for this year. So on the 20th to the 24th, that is from Wednesday to Sunday, we shall have the last revival week of this year. So tell your neighbor not to miss out that revival week. You have all seen the wonders we have been experiencing. So mark it on your calendars and be available for revival week. On the 22nd of December, we shall have Christmas carols. Everyone say Christmas carols. Yes, we shall have some jingle bells, some Christmas tree. Come, let's sing. Come, let's experience the spirit of Christmas. It brings joy unto us. And um, tell everyone that you know all your friends, all the children, Let's be around for Christmas carols and let us sing. On the 23rd of December, we shall have the children's Christmas party. I can't hear some excitement, church. The children's Christmas party, it's on the 23rd. So bring all your children, all the babies of this house, and let us celebrate them as we finish this year, 2023. And on the 25th of December, we shall have Christmas Day. Yes, Christmas is the best time of the year. So let us all be around for service that day. We shall have service from here, so be nowhere else. On the 26th of December, we shall have Boxing Day. And Boxing Day culture, you give a gift to your pastor, you give a gift to your friend for your family, so make it special this year. And let's all be available for the service as it will be communicated and as we gift our friends and families. On the 31st of December, 2023, we shall have the crossover prayers. Everyone say crossover prayers. So we shall start from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Let it be the last day of the year as you spend it in church. Be nowhere else. Do not be in a club. Do not go anywhere else. Dedicate your year 2024. Start it in power. Declare that 2024 will be your year. And let us all see you there. Invite your friends and family for the crossover prayers on the 31st. We shall all be here and nowhere else. So thank you so much for listening to me. Have a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2024. Thank you. Please come. Let's pray together as a church. We are going to host Express Fellowship. Express Fellowship is part of us, but kindly take note of that. Amen. Shall we all stand and share the words of the grace together? Amen. Make sure you smile to your neighbors you're sharing with them. Don't intimidate them. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Before you go home, walk around, hug somebody, smile at them, get to know them. 
Amen. Get their numbers. It's a family church. Praise the Lord. God bless you.